Put your hands together with us. Oh, we love you this morning, Jesus. We worship you in this place. Come on, put your hands together. Sing this with me. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. Has done great things, amen. And see what our Savior has done, and see how his love overcomes. He has done great things, he has done great things. Sing it out, oh hero! Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the Quiet, my 
celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Isn't it so good to be in the house today? Happy Easter. All right, some of you are excited about it. Happy Easter. So in the early church, they had a tradition. This is our tradition on Easter Sunday morning. After that first Easter morning, whenever Christians, believers would see each other, they would greet each other by saying, He is risen. And the other person would respond by saying, He is risen indeed. And this was sort of like their language to say, We're believers. We share the same Savior. We share the same hope. We share the same future. And this is what I want us to do. We always do it. This half is going to say, He is risen. And this half is going to say, He is risen indeed. And it's just kind of being a little anthem. This is what we do every Easter Sunday morning. Those of you in the balcony, you just sort of pick which group you want to be a part of. So here we go. You ready? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's do it again. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Isn't that great news today? The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. He's on the throne, and because of that, you and I have hope, not just in future, in heaven, but right here in this earth, in this life today. And I just praise God. It's so good to be with you today. If you're a guest with us, right in front of you is a giant card that looks like this that says, Welcome, or there's a QR code on the screen. I'd love for you to take the 20 seconds in just a moment it's going to take for you to fill this out. You can leave it on the pew. You can put it in those black boxes that are at all the exits where all of us that are regulars are going to give today. Just honor God with our tithe and offering. But you can just put this in there. This will be your contribution for today. And I just want to thank you for choosing to worship with us on this Easter Sunday morning. And then you can just fill out that QR code. I think most of them have become very common with those because of restaurants and other things. Just fill that out. We'd love to reach out and say thank you for choosing to be with us today. When you came in, you got our brand new spring First Church magazine that Miss Reagan and Mr. Allen recently finished for us. It's gorgeous. I want you to take that. It just walks you through all that we're going to do for the next three months in ministries here at our church. We want to be engaged in your life, and we want to serve you in any way that we can. Thank you again for choosing to worship with us today. Why don't you just turn to somebody right now and tell them you look good today. All right, let's do that. Hey, you look good today. You look good. And you do. You're a beautiful, beautiful congregation. And we're going to be blessed right now. You can be seated after you've finished greeting each other. And um, just let's celebrate together. Put your hands together. Thank our choir, drama teams, dance teams, our tech teams for all of their hard work for helping us to experience and celebrate Easter together today. Put your hands together really good. Here we go.
day breaks. The sun wakes. Just over the horizon, we set our eyes on a donkey. A lowly creature, in all honesty. But his rider smiles, bright like the sun. His face brings hope. They say he is king of the Jews, the great Messiah whom we await. Excitement overtakes me. I can't wait any longer, so I take up a palm branch. I wave it wildly. I say, save us. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. He is the highest, better than we ever could have dreamed. He is here to redeem, to invite all to himself, to break the chains that have kept us from the Father, to call us children, son and daughter. He will lay down his crown to give us a chance. He will set aside his righteousness to help us advance. He is the Messiah. It's true. Hosanna in the highest has made us brand new.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and that Word spoke words that turned chaos into order, gave the seas and skies their border. This Word that spoke was Himself unspoken. He had no beginning, and He has no end. He gave life to all things, and with each breath we draw Him in. Each shoot that emerges from the cold, hard ground, within every bud there is life to be found. The green that springs up is the promise of life, spoken by the Word who was there at the first. Then one day, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word who made man became man. He taught in our streets and preached in our public squares. He met the world's needs, not with hate, but with compassion and care. Ready to demonstrate to the world his passion and righteous seal, he came not to harm us, but rather to heal. He was in the world, the world that he had made, but it looked right through him. The people saw, but they didn't recognize their maker. He went to the cross. He died the death of the unjust. It shattered the faith of his disciples and tested their trust. But on the third day, on the third day at the break of dawn, the light of life pierced the darkness and death's power was gone. The grave could not hold him. The stone rolled away. The creator burst forth into the light of a new day. He showed us what His name means and that He is mighty to save. When the Word who laid the foundations of creation said, It is finished. It wasn't the end, but rather just the beginning. The risen Word who came before time itself said that everything is new. He meant every people, tribe, and nation. And that means... He meant you.
died so we could live. Then he rose up from that grave. Name another king like this. All authority forever belongs to him. He reigns in victory. Name another king. father's love now there aren't many things in this world that are stronger than a father's love when it comes to children there is almost nothing in the world that a father won't do to secure their safety back in March of 2021 there was a man fishing on the banks of the Noose River here in Wayne County with his children I can envision this man watching as his son learns how to cast and how it felt there watching him as he was reeling in fish and watching the look on his face what excitement he must have had with the anticipation of that son catching his first fish but then suddenly he turned to help his other son and he heard a splash to his horror he turned around and sees his son being swept away by a rushing current. But without hesitation or with any regard for his own safety, he does what we fathers do. He jumps in and he tries to save his son. Ultimately, both the father and the son lost their lives. But that is what we do as fathers. We do whatever we have to do for the safety of our children. That's how God made us. And we know that kind of love comes from Him. So if we love our children that much, just imagine how much more God loves His Son. I've lost a son. Some of you may have. And I think, how must God have felt 
as he stood in heaven watching his son, his only son, beat, mocked, spat on, and ultimately hung on a cross. He even had to ignore his son's plea when he cried, Father, please save me, but not your will, not my will, rather, but yours. And he turned his back on his son as his son died. But this is also a story of a father's love. You see, folks, he loved you and me so much that he was willing to let his son die for you.
want to tell you a story this morning about a little boy named Ben. You see, growing up, Ben had a father who enjoyed working with his hands and tinkering on things around the house and making sure everything was right. And he always did his own oil changes. And over the course of the years, these oil changes, he would gather in this large metal container. And this stuff, it was dirty. I mean, it was filthy. It was basically sludge. And he would eventually carry it and get it recycled. But in the meantime, it sat in this container just outside the garage underneath the eaves. Now, being a good dad, he always instructed little Ben to keep his distance. And he did. I mean, Ben absolutely did. Until he didn't. On this one particular occasion, little Ben was innocently strolling by when he stopped and he looked and he took a couple of steps back and he could then hear his own heart beating as he looked down and saw his reflection in this inky sludge. Now it was at this very moment that Ben knew exactly what he should not do, but he did it anyway. He went all in. I mean, hands all the way up to his elbows. And this stuff, it was thick. It was slimy. It was nasty. Basically, it was awesome. (laughs) But then it wasn't awesome. Because Ben suddenly realized how much trouble he was in. He could feel the oil clinging to his skin as it dripped from his fingertips. So he tried to shake it off, but it just made a bigger mess. So he tried to wipe it and skim it off, but just nothing was working. So he ran to his father's shop and he grabbed a rag that was way too small for the job. So in desperation, he snuck into the house and he went into the bathroom. And there he began to scrub and scrub with soap and water. But all he managed to do was get the oil all over himself and all over the white porcelain sink and all over the bathroom tile. It was at this moment he knew what he had to do. Dad, he could hear his father's footsteps in the living room. Then he heard him coming down the hallway. As his father opened that bathroom door, being burst into tears because he was so ashamed. But without saying a word, his father reached out and he took that oil-stained hand and he led him to the kitchen where underneath the sink, he pulled out this orange-scented, sandy light soap and he began to wash the oil away. Little Ben stood there and watched the oil going down the drain. Sin makes an ungodly mess it makes a mess of us it makes a mess of the things and the people we use to try to cover it up and clean it up and it simply cannot be gotten rid of unless unless we're given stronger stuff And the good news is, is when we call out to Jesus for help, he has stronger stuff. Where 
of your breath I die now daily because I've learned to live in the grace that belongs to all who are born again I am cleansed I am washed I am sanctified I am Holy Ghost here and water baptized I am right with my God for all time cause Jesus my Savior's alive at the table where children are fed we are filled with the mercy of the Lamb and the bread I feast now daily because I have to live the grace that belongs to all who are born again I am cleansed I am washed I am sanctified I am Holy Ghost here and water that dies I am right with my God all the time cause Jesus my Savior Aren't you glad this morning that you and I have stronger stuff? Because we all at some point in our life have made a mess. A mess that was so ugly that there was no way that we could clean ourselves up. A mess that was so powerful that you and I needed something divine to help us. So this is what Paul tells us in the book of Ephesians in chapter 1, verse 19. He says, I pray this is something that you and I struggle with so he prays about something that you and I need in our life that you and I would begin to understand 
Isn't that a great phrase? The incredibly great His power is. Maybe today you've been trying to do your life in your own power, in your own strength. Maybe in your own ability. But He has power to help us. To help us with peace. To help us with our guilt. To help us with our shame. To help us with our future. Maybe today you need help with, future, with hope. No matter what help you need, He is the stronger stuff that all of us need to help those who believe in Him. And then He tells us about that kind of power. He said it's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. So that's great power. That's strong, stronger stuff that you and I need. Today is the same power that is the power to forgive our past. Maybe your past haunts you. Maybe your past hinders you. It trips you up. Maybe yesterday controls today in your life. And it keeps you from enjoying tomorrow. But I love that phrase when he tells us that his power is incredibly great. And that power can help you with your past. I love what Paul says in Colossians chapter 2. And he was a guy that knew this because he was a guy that used to kill Christians. He was a guy that persecuted the church. And yet he becomes a believer and becomes a guy that builds and plants churches. And writes so much of what we know of the gospel. And in Colossians chapter 2, and I think talking about his own sin and his own mess that he had made, he said he has forgiven all of our sins. And he has canceled the record of every debt that stood against us, nailing it to the cross. See, when Peter that night, and if you're familiar with the story, when Jesus was betrayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, cuts off Malchus's ear. He's going to protect the Lord. We admire his courage. But Peter's got a problem in that moment. See, to strike a Roman soldier would be executed by death. So when Jesus picks up Malchus's ear, puts it back on him, performs his miracle right before he's about to be tried and crucified, two things happened in that moment. It was a compassionate moment to heal a bleeding Roman soldier. But it also was to spare Peter's life. Peter would have died for that act of violence in the Garden of Gethsemane. But because Jesus healed him, there wasn't any evidence. The record had been canceled. Nobody could prove that it ever had happened. Because of what Jesus did on the cross in heaven today, there's no evidence against you. And your sins are forgiven. Your past is covered by the mighty power, the stronger stuff of Jesus. But maybe today... Your struggle is not with your past. Maybe today your struggle is with your present circumstances. And I just love this because Paul tells us that he has the power to change our circumstances. We've been talking about these mountains that we all climb in life in our sermon series this month. And sometimes that mountain is personal, it's relational. Sometimes it's financial. Sometimes it's in our health. Sometimes it's in our, in our emotions and our thought processes. Sometimes it's just in our life. And we have circumstances that are bigger than we are. But today, they're not bigger than God. That's why Paul affirms for us in the book of Ephesians that he is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to the power that is working in us. So I don't know what your need is, but I know that you can't imagine anything bigger than God is. And you can't ask for anything that God can't do today. So the power of heaven, the stronger stuff, helps us with our circumstances. And then thirdly, it's the power to meet our greatest needs. This is the thing in life that we struggle with is our unmet needs, our sort of sense of disappointment with life. Because it doesn't turn out the way we planned. It doesn't turn out the way we want it. And I'm so glad that there is stronger stuff in heaven for us there too. 
But the greatest need that all of us had was not a need that was about our relationships or not a need about our health or not a need about our finances. It was not a need about something personal. It was with our sins. That's why Peter tells us this, and this brings us to this moment of com of communion this morning that Jesus himself and I just love these redundant pronouns that Peter's going to use when he writes this he himself like, why does Peter do that why does he just say Jesus he himself bore our sins in his body notice the pronouns on the tree on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for his righteousness. And then he tells us this, and by his wounds, his stripes, the beating on his back, you and I are healed. We're healed physically, we're healed personally, we're healed spiritually. So this morning we come to just celebrate the great resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I would like for you to stand this morning with me. When you came in today, you were given a communion cup. If you didn't get one, they're on the side walls. Our ushers are coming into the aisles right now to have those prepared for you. Now, this is a moment that we experience as believers. This, this is not for people who are unbelievers. These are for followers of Christ. But this morning, you can make the decision to receive Christ as your Savior. And then the first thing that you get to do after that moment is to observe and experience Holy Communion together. And so I want us to bow together right now. If you don't have communion elements, just lift your hands. They'll come to you right now. They'll bring those to you. In the balcony, on the floor. Maybe this morning with your head bowed right now. Maybe you're at home and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. What better day to give your heart to Jesus than on Easter Sunday, the day that we remember his death on Friday, the day that we celebrate his resurrection on Sunday morning to know that he's the stronger stuff that you need in your life. You said, how do I do that, Bill? It's a simple prayer. It's an invitation. It's an acknowledgement. Just pray this with me if that's you. If you're not sure, maybe you came today and you're not sure. Maybe you came today and you're just really sure. You know that you're not in a relationship. You're not walking with Jesus. Just pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, save me because I know that I can't save myself. But I believe today that you came and you lived on this planet. You lived just like us. And you suffered and bled and died on a cross willingly for our sins. Today, I receive you as my Savior. I believe that that death paid for my sins. And I ask you to come into my heart and into my life and become the Lord of my life. I want to live for you. I want to follow you all the days of my life. And if you prayed that prayer, you're his child, you're in his family. Just in the chat right now at home, will you just put, I prayed the prayer. If you're in the room, you just lift your hand and say, Bill, that was me. I prayed that prayer today with you. This was my moment. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the greatest thing you get to do right now is you get to observe this moment of communion. There are, there are sort of two elements here. There's a bottom and a top to this. Will you just take this bottom element off that's going to reveal this little piece of bread? On the night that our Lord was betrayed, the gospel writers tell us that Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he lifted it up to heaven. Will you just lift your piece of bread up to heaven? Jesus said, this is my body that is broken for you. Isn't it astounding that in Jesus is broken as you and I are made whole. In his death, you and I get life. Through his suffering, you and I get security and peace. Let's just thank him. Lord, thank you for your body. You were divine. You're the son of God. You're the creator of the world. You were in heaven and you came to earth for us. And you lived here in a body. You humbled yourself. You humbled yourself to death on a cross.
today we remember that death we remember the suffering in your body the pain when you were all of our sins were nailed to the cross with you today we just thank you and we receive this bread and remember your suffering will you do that and then will you turn your elements over and will you take this cup the Bible tells us that on that night that last supper that Jesus lifted up the cup will you lift up the cup Jesus said this is my blood he didn't mean his literal blood he was telling us that this was a remembrance of his suffering and his sacrifice his death that they were going to see that he was going to experience and Jesus said this is the new covenant this is the new relationship my death not about rules and rituals it's not about following certain orders but it's about you living and walking with me and living and loving me and so today we just remember his blood his blood Lord we thank you for the blood because it's your blood that saves it's your blood that cleanses us your blood is the stronger stuff that we all need in our life what we cannot do your blood can do one drop of your blood Lord we thank you for your holy pure life that you gave on this Easter Sunday we remember 2,000 24 years later we remember your love for us will you now receive the cup and now we're going to sing this anthem together as just a celebration of this wonderful wonderful day will you just join this choir as they come back and now lead us as we worship together in this song
day. What a great day to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Again, these magazines are at the exits when you leave. If you're a guest with us, thank you so much for choosing to be here. Fill out that guest card. There's a black box for all of us that are regulars. Summer Rose Bird is with us in this service. Tommy is with us in this service. Their egg hunt was phenomenal yesterday. Can you just put your hands together and thank our children's team and ministry and all that they did and Dylan, Tyler, and our students student teams together, just so grateful for all of their hard work to serve families and our children. We have a whole new group, a gigantic group coming in at 930. If you could help us, when you leave this morning, leave out the back of our property. There are two driveways for you, and then you can just make a right, make a right at the next stop sign, and you'll be right back on Wayne Memorial. And I promise it'll be faster than you trying to leave from the front, and we have a whole massive group actually already standing in the lobby. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Happy Easter. We have no services or life groups tonight. I look forward to seeing you next Sunday when I start our brand new series on the book of Job called Hope in the Dark. Mark, and I'll be here, and I hope you will too. God bless you. You have a great day.